Hello peeps and welcome back to Mod of Minecraft with Night Dagger. Um, I really haven't done a whole lot with the power gen in here. I did move my kitchen over, so that's here. I didn't really do a whole lot with this, other than charge my flux capacitor. A little bit, because this thing is nearly full. Actually, it's really nearly full. Probably should at some point. I'll do that later. We're going to toss that in there and get that going for now. Fair warning, this episode might be a little short because I am exhausted. And I wanted to put up a second episode this week, so I'm recording, but I don't know how long I'm going to last. So I think I'm going to get something out of the way that I've been meaning to do and just leave this with a short episode. You might notice that I have an ender lily seed in my inventory. Well, I did a lot of exploring off camera. Point of reference, this is where I am. Uh, there. I'm right there. I explored all the way out there. And I explored all the way out here. And I explored all the way down there. Because I was looking for a place that I could go Enderman hunting. And I tried in the plains here, and it wasn't working too well. And I wanted to find cinder pearls anyway, so I came the whole way out here and found a desert and got a whole bunch of cinder pearls. And then I was breaking grass randomly and got my ender lily. So we're going to work on setting up something that's going to help us with the ender lily. The phytogenic isolator is a machine that basically grows plants. Now, this requires a lumium gear, which means we need to make lumium in order to make this thing happen. We need lumium blend. This has to be made with energized glowstone, tin, and silver. So we need energized glowstone. This means we need a magma crucible also. So we're going to start with the magma crucible. Magma crucible requires some nether brick. Uh, it also requires machine frames. So tin gear. Let's just get some of my metals and ores that I know I'm going to need. We're going to need some silver. We'll probably need some invar. Probably need some electrum and some gold. Platinum. Huh, where'd I get platinum from? And I've got one piece of hardened glass. I'm going to need some just basic glass. Tell me I'm out of glass. All but. Well, that just means it's time to cover some more glass. There we go. That'll work. Okay, redstone furnace. <clears throat> glass, get. All right. Redstone conductance coil. Oh, redstone. Redstone's going to help. We're also going to need some glowstone before all said and done. And we'll need some nether rack. Did I bring any nether rack home with me from the nether? Yes, I did. Good. There we go. That'll cook that in another brick, and then we can combine that into the actual another brick. And disco. There's my another brick. Okay, tin gear. We're going to need two of them, so I may as well make them. Reception coil, conductance coil, copper gears, need copper, we 
machine frames. We're going to need two. And magma crucible. We're also going to want a bucket. So I'll just make one. I don't feel like looking for it. And we'll plug this monster in right up there. Now this stuff, when it's melted down in a magma crucible, one of them is a quarter bucket, so I only need four. We are going to need a tank. So I don't feel like making a fluid transposer. So let's get ourselves a redstone servo. And a portable tank. And we'll pop that up here. And you can now put it to the top. And this thing's slow as balls. Okay, in the meantime, let's go ahead and get what we need for the isolator. Fight a giant isolator. It's going to take two more copper gears. It's going to take a redstone reception coil. It's going to take a couple dirt. And I like the fact that if you have something selected in here now, It puts it back in your inventory instead of dumping it all over the ground. That's a nice quality of life change. Okay, there's my energized glowstone. Uh, we're going to need to disable the input on the furnace. It already is. Because I need a piece of pulverized silver. And three pulverized tin. Three pulverized tin, a pulverized silver, and energized glowstone is lumium. Oh, lumium has to be done in an induction smelter, huh? There's my Lumium. Lumium gear. Phytogenic isolator. Nice. Okay, for right now I'm going to put the, far the phytogenic isolator in here. Just like right there. This takes Phytogrow and then it requires a seed in order to produce you a seed. I think it also requires water. So that's going to be a little bit of an issue. Well, not necessarily. Let's say... Let's say I break you i put you right there. Again, this is all just a temporary setup. This is not permanent home for anything here. But if I get some of my Fluiduct... Q Dagger looking for Fluiduct for the next five minutes. It was the last chest I looked in. Of course, then I guess that falls back on the whole, of course, it's the last chest, because why would you keep looking when you find a thing? 
Okay, I need some enriched phytoglow, which means I actually need to make one more machine. I need an energetic infuser. So I need another machine frame, two copper gears, two transmission coils, that's a conductance coil, and a reception coil. This takes a lot of coils. So, we'll start off with the machine frame. We'll get the two copper gears. Two transmission coils. Conductance coil. Reception coil. And infuser. You, we're going to put right up there. We're going to allow you to output to the top. So that's going to fill now. Now, where is my Phyto Grow? I don't have a whole lot of the Phyto Grow stuff, but I think I found a way to make it pretty easily. And predictably, I can't find it. I should still have 14 of it. Because the recipe I was using makes 16. And I used 2 for the watering can. Okay, well, whatever. If we take a look at the recipe for the Fido Grow. We need the rich the rich phyto grow. This takes rich slag, pulverized charcoal, and nitre, or saltpeter, or nitrate dust. Um, you can also infuse sap into regular phyto grow, but that goes a bit beyond what I really want to mess with at the moment. Let's fused quartz with signalium. This was a problem last time. Cinnabar. How do you get cinnabar? By crushing redstone in a crusher. Or pulverizing redstone ore. Or pulverizing gold ore. 10% chance of cinnabar if you pulverize gold ore. I should have some gold ore around here somewhere. I do. So let's go ahead and run the gold ore through the pulverizer and see if we get lucky. Let's destabilize clef rate or whatever the hell that is. I was looking to see if I had any cinnabar. And what happens if you cook cinnabar? Because I must have cooked cinnabar at some point. Oh, you get quicksilver. You can't turn quicksilver back, can you? Shit. So I've had cinnabar before, I've just accidentally cooked it. Okay, cinnabar with iridium ore gives a 100% chance, with gold ore gives a 75. So let's try it with the gold ore. We're going to do gold ore with cinnabar. 
Cross your fingers, hope we get lucky. Damn. Well, cross your fingers here, hope we get lucky. Double damn. Okay. Rich lag. Hmm. Uh, 20% chance if you melt down a clock. Twenty percent chance if you melt down a compass. I think I'm gonna make a couple of compasses and melt them down. So it's not like iron's expensive. We'll melt those down and get the iron back out of them and see if we can get lucky. Statistically, we should get one. While that's running, I do need pulverized charcoal. So let me find a piece of charcoal. There we go. We'll run that through. <clears throat> Now while that runs, I need one last thing. I need the niter. Now I could use saltpeter. This requires an alchemy table with pulverized coal. Looks like it requires an archmage's blood orb. Or a master. Okay, yeah. But still, I mean, that's, that's blood magic and I haven't even started with it yet. Um, I could use the nitrate dust here, which is you pulverize sandstone to get sand with a 50% chance of nitrate. Or I could use the thermal expansion version of nitrate, which you get from putting gunpowder through a crusher guaranteed. Centrifuging an unstable comb, guaranteed. Pulverizing sandstone, 30% chance. Or I could use a manufactory and put one sandstone through for two. Manufactory is actually not hard to make. It's a couple of flint, a piston, redstone, and a copper solenoid. So let's do that. Let's make our first nuclear craft machine. So that gets copper solenoids. Uh, break you down. There's our piston. There's our flint. Need some lead. Tell me I have no lead. There's my lead. Okay, manufactory. I have reached the goal industrializing. Craft a manufactory. Hmm, nice. Now, will this thing run off of just straight RF power? It will. Nice. Let's give it a piece of sandstone. Let's see how long it takes. That's actually not too bad. Like, it's by no means fast. But when you're looking at guaranteed to get two of them, that's actually nice. I'm going to have to look into more of those nuclear craft machines. See how they compare. Anyway, rich slag, pulverized charcoal, niter gives you rich phytogrow. 
Let's find the rest of my fighter bro. It's not in there. It's not in there. Oh, there's regular Fido Grow. Oh, wait, that's right. I needed the regular. It was regular Fido Grow that I used the first time. Because that's the saltpeter, charcoal, and regular slag. Okay, now I got it. Okay, so rich Fido Grow into an energetic infuser. Gives you. Once it finishes infusing. Fluxed Phyto Grow. Fluxed Phyto Grow into a phytogenic isolator with an Ender Lily seed appears to be ball slow. Is this even working? Yeah, it's using 20 RF attack. Oh yeah, it's working. It's just working stupidly slow. Okay. Upgrades. Uh, Signalium requires Electrum and Cryothium. I don't have Cryothium yet. I should be able to do... Reinforced here. I'll need some Fused Quartz. Well, you can just use... it doesn't have to be fused quartz, right? It can be hardened glass. Why am I even looking? I know what the recipe of hardened glass is. Let's pulverize some obsidian. Pulverize some lead. And you and you. Oh yeah, this thing is slow as hell. So let's see if we can speed it up a little. kits. So the first thing we're going to need is the hardened upgrade kit. So bronze gear. Done. Reinforced upgrade is a silver gear with some of that electrum that we had and the fused quartz. Let's install these two upgrades into the Phytogenic Isolator and see how well it runs then. Okay, it appears to be running a little faster. Uh, what can I do for Augments? Nutrient Recovery. Provides a chance to not consume fertilizer. Allows for trees to be grown. Non-fertilizer inputs are not consumed. Huh. So non-fertilizer inputs are not consumed, improving automation. Which means, basically, if I install this, I can just leave my ender lily seed in there and just provide it with phytogrow, and it will constantly produce ender pearls. That's nice. Nutrient recovery would also be nice. Uh, 
There we go. And we'll toss some more Flux Phyto Grow in there. Let's go ahead and get this Monoculture Cycle. Oh, Nickel Plates, Signalium Gears, and Flux Phyto Grow. But not yet. This is not bad, but it requires the rich stuff. So for right now, let's just put a couple of auxiliary, uh, auxiliary reception coils in it. Because the reception coils work on all machines. I think. So right now, it's using 40 RF a tick. It's going at a little slower than one second per percent. If I install that, oh, that's substantially faster. That more than doubled the speed. But I want to see what it's going to do with cinder pearls. Now I gotta figure out what I do with my freaking cinder pearls. There they are. I also need to get my steam dynamo running again. Probably gonna want to feed some more coal, uh, coal coke to these. Because right now I'm running at a slight power deficit. Well, I was until I put that in. And until this thing ran out. Let's see what it does with a cinder pearl. Okay, so it's still kind of slow with cinder pearls. Okay, this will always give blaze powder with with it always giving the cinder pearl back. So that's nice. Uh, let's go ahead and get some signalum. That's 10 redstone. To get the destabilized. Yeah, see, that's nice. That's really nice. Okay, so... The nickel plates, I can just bash nickel with an engineer's hammer. So that's not hard. The signalium gear is going to be the difficult part. And even that won't be too bad. There's my nickel plates. I need a redstone conductance coil. That's good. Now for the signalum, I need three copper and a silver. So let's give it one silver. And three copper. There's that. This is done, so we can scoop up my destabilized redstone. You and you and you get you. Do you have to be cooked in a... Yes, you still have to be cooked in this. Uh, 
Oh, there's my slag. Granted, this time I needed rich slag, so regular slag doesn't help me much, but still. There's my signalum gear for my monoculture cycle augments. Now, if we put that in, it's going to slow it down a little bit. It's running at about a percent a second. But the monoculture cycle will prevent the seed from being consumed. So this thing will just constantly output enderpearls. Which is going to be really nice because we're going to do a bunch of enderpearls pretty soon. Now, with this thing running, I actually don't even have to worry about going to the end early. Because I've got ender pearls without endermen, and I've got blaze pearl, I've got blaze powder without blaze. So I really don't have any need to risk those things. Now, I don't know if I can turn the blaze powder into blaze rods in any way. I somehow doubt I can. Oh, I can. I can compact five blaze powder into a blaze rod. So, I mean, at this point, I don't even need to go risk the end. Or the nether. Gas tiers, though. Yeah, gas tiers are still a bitch. End stabulation apparatus. Yeah, morbs with ghasts. Or a gas tier chicken. Blaze rod chicken and a bone white chicken. Uh, the blaze rod chicken is a gold chicken and a lava chicken. Coal, nether quartz. So nether quartz is a base chicken. Coal is flint and log. These are both base chickens. The gold chicken is a yellow chicken, which you get from throwing yellow eggs, and an iron chicken, which is bone white and flint. Okay. So chicken breeding could actually get me some gas tears that I haven't to screw around with it too much. And see? Didn't consume my underlily. There is still a slight, 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 slight chance of getting a secondary output here. But that thing cuts it a lot. Yes, secondary output chance is substantially reduced, but not eliminated. So the longer this runs, the better chance I'll get of having a second Ender Lily show up, at which point I can put in a second Phytogenic Isolator and keep going. Then at that point, it's just a matter of producing Phytogrow and possibly putting some sort of tree tapper onto a tree to get tree sap and infusing that to get the rich Phytogrow and then infusing that with RF to get the flux Phytogrow and I can actually automate the production of both Ender Pearls and Blaze Powder without Endermen. Or Blazes. And that's pretty cool. But I think I have done enough for this episode. I'm not going to get anything else really major accomplished. This is what I wanted to do. It took a little longer than I thought it would because we needed a few more bits and bobs. But I think we made some pretty good progress. So I'm going to call this episode a little early and end it right here. This has been Night Dagger with episode 8 of Mod of Minecraft with Night Dagger. Hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. When we come back, we might actually go end hunting just to see if we can find the end. Because if we can find the end, we can easily get some more ender pearl seeds and we can start getting a little bit of draconium without having to hunt for it too hard. Now, I'm not going to get started in draconic evolution real hardcore, but there are a couple of machines and a couple of things I'd really like to have in the early game. So we might see about getting into some of that. But we'll see where things take us. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you later, peeps.